Hello you guys, my name is Dr. Lushile Mali, also known as The Tooth Fairy and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be for my high school learners. I know there's a lot of my viewers are still in high school and they are trying to apply for university, they're trying to get to know more about dentistry and girls and boys, I got you. I was such a huge maths failure in high school, believe it or not. In grade eight to grade 10, I was really, really struggling with my mathematics to the point where in grade nine, I just really thought about switching to maths lit. Now, there's nothing wrong about doing maths lit, but for the career choice that I wanted to go into, which is medicine, AKA dentistry, I knew that maths lit was not gonna be the right choice for me. So I had to stick it through in maths and ladies and gentlemen, that was such a journey and I am here to share my journey and also a few tips that you can use to improve your maths. So today's video is about how to improve your mathematics. You've Googled all these videos and all these tips on how to improve in math and you searched up on YouTube how to improve your math skills and you happen to stumble across this here video so in this video I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how I went from being an average 40 to 50 percent student to getting a hundred percent on my test in metric between grade 8 and grade 10 for me I was struggling so bad in mathematics in grade 8 it wasn't that bad but in grade 9, I was I was drowning. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I was completely drowning. And it was difficult for me because I was a, one of the top achievers in primary school. I was used to, you know, all the praise about being good. So when I came to high school, boy, was I in a shock when I first failed my maths test or failed the test in general. Like, I was like, what? This is not me. Someone get this paper away from me. This is not what I wrote in my test. I was really big on the denial. So in grade eight, I suffered in silence, but my parents were seeing my marks and they were noticing that I was dropping in maths, which was very unusual for their daughter. But I did nothing about it. And then in grade nine, I was struggling even more. The work was piling up and I just couldn't keep up. My teacher at the time was really good at mathematics, but he wasn't really connecting well with some of these students who were underperforming such as me. So I continued underperforming and I just thought to myself, I should just give up on my dream on medicine or dentistry. Like it's not gonna happen with these maths marks, getting 40%, getting 50% for maths on a good day is 60%. I was like, there's no ways I'm gonna get accepted. But then I really, really had a passion for healthcare. I didn't wanna give up my dream although my odds were completely against me. So I decided I needed to have a talk to my parents. So we spoke about my maths and how I can improve. And then my dad suggested me to see a tutor and he's gonna get me all the maths books that I needed. So fine, I got all the maths books that I needed and I was seeing my tutor once a week but still, I wasn't really interested in maths that much. I just saw it as the most dreadful subject in my entire life. So even when I had to do it in the weekends with my tutor, I was not excited about maths. Like I just wanted, like I just didn't want to think about it. I, I didn't want to do it. Like it was just annoying. Even getting the homework, it was just annoying. Although my parents were investing in me, I still was failing. The third term of grade nine, I spoke to my mom and. I asked her if she can maybe have a chat with the principal because I want to go into the top maths class in school. So the top maths class in school had this excellent, excellent teacher. He was just producing the best maths marks in the entire grade. And I just, I just, I just wanted to be part of that class because like, why not? Like I wanted to be in the top class and improve my marks because I wanted to get into healthcare. So my mother had a call, she spoke to the principal and the principal called me into the office the next week. He sat me down and he was like, Lulu, I know you wanna get into this maths class and you wanna be taught by teacher so-and-so, 
but darling it's not gonna happen because your maths marks are not top notch and he has the top maths performing students in his class i was very disappointed that i didn't get the teacher that i wanted but i had to face reality i was failing in maths and there was no ways i was gonna be in the top class like for maths like what was i even thinking like what was going on the girl maths was in maths eh? literally and the maths was in maths eh? so i was like you know what let me just continue and believe in myself because it's clear now I'm not gonna get in the top maths class. My marks are not improving. I'm meeting a tutor every week. Something needs to change. And that something was me. So, which brings me to my first topic. You need to change your mindset. You're gonna write down a couple of goals that you're gonna try to achieve with your maths marks. So, what I did, I had a little book that I got from my friend. It was a pink small book, nothing fancy. And I decided this is gonna be my goal book. So every time I have a goal, I'm gonna write it down and just tick it off once I achieve it. So I literally wrote down, okay, for the next test, I'm gonna try to get maybe a 60 on this test. And let's see if I can achieve it. Because remember 60 was a big thing for me. Like I was I was done in the trenches of months. We laugh our guys. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to get a 60. Changing your mindset is a really powerful thing. So once I decided that I don't want to fail maths anymore, I want to improve in my maths, I decided that I am going to practice maths every chance I get, which leads me to my second point, practice, practice, practice. I took all the maths books that I had. One of them was the mind action, which I'm going to put up here. The other one was the mathematics answer series study guide. The other one was the maths handbook and study guide. So I was using these three books religiously, guys. I used them throughout my high school, and those are the books that really, really boosted my marks. At first, they didn't because I had didn't change my mindset. I didn't believe that I could really, really, really improve my maths marks. But once I started changing my mindset, the books really helped me. Every afternoon, I would sit down, do my homework, finish blah blah blah. If I struggled with my homework, I would send it off to my tutor and then he would send it back to me on WhatsApp and then I would see how he worked it out. So he would give out all the steps instead of just giving the answer and then explain to me via VN how I got how he got to the answer. It really took so much of my time trying to solve a maths problem. Guys, it's so embarrassing when I say, but I was really, really slow in the maths department. Sometimes I wouldn't even figure it out. I would go to the back of the book and see how they worked it out and look at the steps and repeat the steps, try to get to the answer by myself. So I was really, really struggling. And then I continued doing that on a weekly basis, which leads me to my third point. You need to study in advance. So once I got started getting comfortable with using all these different maths materials or these handbooks study guides i realized that i can actually do maths like if i give myself time i can actually you know we'll do my one to one to get to my steps and solve the problem but doing some maths topics in advance so by grade 10 i was comfortable and i was doing my own maths and guess what you guys nothing changed i was putting up all this effort all this effort when my maths marks were like maybe improving by one percent which wasn't my goal i was still struggling to get that 60 percent in maths so i kept on doing it i kept on doing it kept going through topics in advance so by the time i get to class i know what is going on and i'm not starting from a fresh so i kept on doing it and by Let's say mid-year of grade 10, my maths marks started to improve drastically. So I started getting about 70 and I was like, oh, the girl can get, the girl can get 70 now? Like, genius. It's giving very much genius to me. So I was completely out of the 40s. I was a regular 60%, 70% girly. And then from there, they just kept picking up and picking up. And then once I got to grade 11, I was really comfortable in maths. Like I was acing that. That was my ish. You know, that was my ish. The teacher started noticing, but hmm, this girl is improving. I made it 
more obvious that my marks were improving my teacher really believed in embarrassing us if we did really bad in maths he would literally organize the maths papers from highest mark to lowest mark and you did not want to be the lowest of the lowest guys and other students were interested in being taught by me Mwah. asking no me for help in maths on whatsapp at school I would meet with them, some of them I would sit with them during lunch or after school because my parents always picked me up late from school. So I was I was being known for, you know, the numbers, knowing how to work the numbers. So I was really enjoying the hype. I was really enjoying, I was gaining a sense of confidence that wow, all this hard work from grade eight to now, it's really like it's really working out for me. All the money I invested in all my tutors, all the books I invested in. And I was also lucky that my best friend, her mother's a teacher, so she would also give me extra books. So I was like, I had a whole library of school books for life science, mathematics, physical science. My family was really investing in my education because we all knew what the goal was to get the girl to be a doctor. I just want to let you know that if you feel like you, sh you want to give up on your dream or your dream course just because a particular subject is not working out the way you want it to, you don't have to give up so early. Like you just need to give yourself more time to invest into your academics because you know what your goal is. You know your dream career. I don't know. And you're just sitting there thinking it's not a possibility because you are 2% away from passing a subject or you're 2% away from getting a distinction. So it takes time. By the time I got to matric, I was just getting 100%, 100%. Like it was crazy. I was going from 90 to 100, 90 to 100 all the time, all the time for my maths marks to the point where I got a distinction in each term except for the last term, Satana is real. It was really sad but at the end of the day, my marks were amazing. At some point, I got 90 something on my report. I believe it was 90, 91, 95% for maths. You need to get a tutor. I had a tutor from grade nine to grade 12. I switched to another tutor for my grade 11 and matric. A tutor who was not actually a teacher. He was not a professional teacher. But he was really really good in teaching maths and physical science so what made it even amazing for me was that this tutor was speaking my language he was a closer person so it was very nice having someone who speaks my language to explain this once i switched from english people to closer speaking people who were teaching me these core subjects that i needed it was quite evident that that was the gap that was what i needed to boost my maths marks and physical science marks to the maximum if i can't afford a teacher what are my alternatives maybe getting a friend to help me. a lot of programs in that were helping these students excel and those schools were performing very very well even more than the schools in the urban areas, excellent teachers that you'll be finding in these township schools. And just because you have this mindset, but no man, I'm in a school, a model C school, you're not opening yourself up to these opportunities. These school programs, you need to attend them more than once a week. When I was in matric, I was attending a school program for maths and physics, which was the weekend. It was on a Saturday and a Sunday, and we would spend morning till afternoon in this class that's how much i was dedicated you guys to improve my maths also another thing that will help you is having a study timetable so in high school i didn't really have a study timetable because i already knew that my weekends were dedicated to going to my extra school program not in a program that's similar to that you have to make time during the week for those subjects especially your core subjects such as your physics and your maths so that's what you should do and i did that also with my other subjects such as life science i would take time in the week maybe on a wednesday afternoon and just make my notes 
on everything that I learned from the previous week little by little you build and you build and by the time your first test comes along the corner you're not sitting there spending hours on a Friday writing notes trying to cram everything on a Saturday and Sunday for your test on Monday so you need to be more intentional about the time that you spend on each subject that you are doing and even now I'm in a program where I mentor a lot of learners I know how it is guys I'm still in tune with the difficulties of high school even though I am a graduate I know exactly how it is because my mentees tell me how they're struggling in school and I set up timetables for them so I know exactly how overwhelming it can be trying to get into a university of your dreams and studying your dream course so you guys that is the end of the video if this video helped you in any way just let me know in the comments down below if there are other tips that i left out and you feel strongly that you want to share with all the other viewers please comment them down below you are helping other kids out there or other learners who are trying to improve their marks for the better and i will see you guys on my next video take care